Hello. My name is Poppy Hayseed. This is the story of Omar Madison Kim, the People's Congressman. This is an abridged telling of the unpublished graduate thesis developed by Deloitte J. Guth, in pursuit of his master's degree in history in 1963 from Creighton University. Chapter 30, Populist to Obstructionist Omar Madison Kim possessed too much metal, to give up his fight in the face of almost insurmountable obstacles. Instead, he waged a vigorous counterattack throughout the 54th Congress, becoming a one-man thorn in the side, as far as the ruling Republicans were concerned. On February 11, 1896, when a bill reached the floor of the House which would have regulated the practice of medicine and surgery, Kim lodged an objection to any proposition that tends to monopolize the art of healing. The House erupted, with numerous questions, asking Kim to analyze the competence of hair doctors, corn doctors, and faith healers. But, Kim stuck to his guns, declaring that the results of the medical egotists could be found in every graveyard in this country. Omar Kim then paralleled the situation with that of the theological egotists, who were too dogmatic to tolerate any and all views toward religion. Kim built a surprisingly concise case against what appeared to be a nonpartisan proposal, and succeeded in delaying its passage for several days. As to the religious analogy which he drew, Kim clearly sought to defend his own fascination for spiritualism. But if that instance had not been enough to show the House that he could play its game of obstructionism, Kim certainly made the point in the next few months. From March through May of 1896, the House met every Friday evening to revise and increase the military pension program. Congressman Kim faithfully attended every session, with the avowed intention of imposing his own hierarchy of values in determining the amount of each pension. Kim failed to see any reason why an officer, or his survivors, should receive a larger pension than an army private, especially in view of Kim's belief that the latter had suffered greater privations, and risk to his life. Iconoclastic and rebellious as Kim's opinion might appear, it nevertheless cast him well in the role of a radical obstructionist. In the end, what had begun as a mere formality for the House members, ended up as an ordeal, filled with steady objections from the red-headed sodbuster, seated in the rear of the chamber. The populist press back in Nebraska, in answer to Republican charges of obstructionism, responded with a rousing cheer and the advice to, just stay right by him Kim. Kim certainly did not win any friends in the House by his dilatory tactics, but, by 1896, Congressman Omar Madison Kim had little desire or purpose for so doing. His three terms in Congress were quickly coming to an ineffectual end. While Kim had tried hard to win political and economic salvation for his fellow agrarians, he had never had the support of a substantial populist bloc in Congress. His party had suffered badly, as early as the elections of 1892 and 1894, when the Republican reaction to agrarian radicalism had made itself felt at the polls. The fact that Omar Kim had found it necessary to run as a fusionist in 1891, rather than a completely independent populist as in the past, merely highlighted the already existing political breakdown of Kim's cause. Moreover, the dissension in Custer County in 1895, had given warning of even greater political trouble brewing. In 1896, Kim did not seek re-election. He closed his Nebraska political career by supporting his free silver colleague, William Jennings Bryan, who was the presidential candidate of both the Democratic and Populist parties. The latter organization did not long survive the strain of fusing with the Democrats to back Bryan, especially in view of the Nebraskans' defeat. As an individual, Omar Madison Kim had helped forge and advance the short-lived Populist Party. In the American tradition of third-party movements, Kim's party had served its purpose by popularizing its demands. Omar Madison Kim's political career had been tied to populist principles, and not necessarily to the party itself. Kim had thus, helped to both create, and destroy, the Nebraska Populist Party. First, by actively participating in the drive to turn the Farmers' Alliance into a political weapon, and, later, by his insistence on fusion with the Western Democrats as the only means for implementing reform. The story of Omar Madison Kim's political career coincided with the rise and fall of Nebraska populism. 
yet even though his personal crusade had failed, Kim would eventually live to see almost all of the principles for which he had fought enacted into law. For Kim personally, his three terms in Congress had brought previously unknown financial solvency. Kim had been able to clear away his debts, to support his family in a respectable fashion, and to purchase a new farm in Colorado when the chance presented itself, all thanks to the $30,000 plus expenses earned as a farmer's advocate in Congress. In addition, Kim practiced a little last-minute nepotism by taking his daughter Maud to the 54th Congress as his first and only secretary. On July 22, 1896, as a financial preparation for his departure from Nebraska, Congressman Kim sold his original homestead for $1,200. That summer, Kim had also returned to Montrose, Colorado, taking a Custer County carpenter with him. They had built a 13-room brick and wood frame home on the farm, at a cost to Kim of over $5,000. Kim then returned for the second, and final, session of the 54th Congress, and left Washington forever in March of 1897. On May 24 of that year, Kim sold his house and land in Broken Bow for $1,250, and prepared for the third and final trip from Nebraska to Colorado. In June, after his children finished school, Kim took his wife, seven children, and mother-in-law, to their new home near Montrose, Colorado. The Nebraska that Kim left behind had brought him disillusionment and realization, debt and solvency, obscurity and respectability, and failure and success. Omer Madison Kim would never return, choosing rather, to pick up once again his family traditions and follow the setting sun. Well, that's the end of another chapter, but not the end of our story about Omer Madison Kim, the People's Congressman. We're going to pause here, and move to the next video. Please click on the link in the comment section below to view the next part of the story. I'm Poppy Hayes Seed, your narrator, thanks again for watching and listening, goodbye for now.